All right, hello everyone. Today, the beginning of October, my sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, is kicking off the month with Breast Cancer Awareness Day. Now, as a woman's healthcare provider, I know that the best defense against this disease is early detection. So, with that in mind, I wanted to make sure you know how to do a proper self-breast exam. Let's get started. So, when you're home and you are taking, getting ready to take your shower, or coming out of the shower, or preparing to go to bed at night, we want to begin with the first part of the exam, which is actually a visual exam. I want you to stand in front of the mirror. I want you to put your hands on your hips like Wonder Woman because, well, you are. But actually, the first part of the exam causes you to make some changes to your breast tissue structure by pushing your hands in your waist. And by doing so, you'll cause the breast tissue to contract. What you want to look for are changes in the skin that may occur with that movement. What you're looking for is dimpling or pulling in the skin, or you want to look for changes in the skin that will look like a lemon or orange peel. After you take a good survey of how you look in the mirror, I want you to take one hand and take it and put it directly behind your head. This opens up all of the breast tissue. What you're going to do then is take two fingers, these two fingers here, and place them against the flat of the breast. Now notice, I'm starting all the way up here because you know what? The breast tissue actually begins up here near your armpit. You wanna put a little pressure against the breast, about as much pressure as it would take to put a dent in this sponge or a little dent in this silly putty. You want to put about that much pressure on the breast tissue. So again, hand behind the head while you're looking in the mirror, take those two fingers, press down, and then roll around. Press down, roll around. You're pressing down to see if you feel a lump, and you're rolling to see if the lump moves. A lump that moves just a little bit or not at all is one that you really want to bring to the attention of your provider. Frankly, you want to bring them all to the attention of your provider, but that's some information that your provider would really like to know. How well does it move? The other thing that your provider would want to know is what does it feel like? A lot of times patients say, Doc, I don't know what exactly what I'm feeling for. So you want to see if your lump that you feel feels as hard as a rock, or is it as hard as a jelly bean? Give it a little give. Or is it as soft as a gummy bear? Giving that type of information to your provider is quite helpful. When you do your exam, you want to cover all the surfaces of the breast. For some people, they make a clockwise motion all the way to the center, or they go all the way up and down in a lawnmower fashion. The most important thing is to cover all surfaces of the breast. Again, push down, roll around. Push down, roll around. Move that tissue around to see if the tissue moves. Do this at least once a month. For those patients who are still having a period, I recommend that you do it right after your period. If you're not having periods, choose a day of the month that belongs to you. For me, I choose a day that corresponds with my birthday. My birthday is March 28th, so the 28th of every month is the day I do my self-breast exam. And I do something nice for myself, like have some ice cream or go shopping. You should do that too. Most importantly, by the age of 40, you need to make sure you're having your annual mammogram. In some populations, particularly the African-American population, there are some recommendations as recently as last year from the American College of Radiology that at the age of 30, that you begin having a risk assessment with your healthcare provider to determine if you need your mammogram a little earlier. Now that mammogram may be added to something else called an MRI based on your risk factors. If your mom or your dad, because you know what, men get breast cancer too. If they have a history of breast cancer, if you have an aunt, a grandmother, a first cousin, 
Those are risk factors that may increase your risk factors and you may need adjunctive therapy, which would include a mammogram and an MRI. Most importantly, take care of yourself. We're gonna fight this disease. We're gonna fight it like a girl. We're gonna fight it like Wonder Women. Have a great day.